when he couldn't get out of the fact that he actually did oppose the automobile plan, he starts saying that President Obama is allowing Jeep to move American jobs to China. Did you see that? I took it personally because I helped Jeep locate that, well, I helped the state of Ohio get Jeep to locate a plant in Toledo, and I know they're expanding it. They've put $500 million in it. They're going to produce new lines there. I know they're expanding in Michigan. And it's just not true. They made a lot of money so they can reopen a plant they closed down in China to sell Jeeps there because Jeeps are heavy. You can't afford to ship them from here to China. But they're expanding in America. So when Jeep said it wasn't so, they kept making the charge. When Chrysler said it wasn't so, they kept making the charge. Even General Motors said, this is not true. <laughs> they doubled down on the charge, and then they pointed out that Jeep is owned by Chrysler, is owned by Fiat, you know, or they have. So then the charge became, the president is working with the Italians <laughs> <laughs> to move jobs to China. <laughs> days ago, come after the Irish and I'm toast. <laughs> now we're laughing, but it's absurd. Is that the kind of decider in chief you want? I don't think so. No! The guy got caught red-handed saying something that wasn't accurate. But we all make mistakes, and it's not a lie unless you know it's not true when you say it. Now, when I was a kid and I got caught with my hand in a cookie jar, I sort of turned red, shrugged my shoulders, take my hand out of the cookie jar. He's grabbing for more cookies. I like Barack Obama as the cider in chief better. His budget to pay for it and to pay our debt down is better. His plan for the future essentially is to invest in 21st century jobs, in modern infrastructure, in information technology, in clean energy, in manufacturing, in the kind of agriculture that will enable us to feed America, sustain the environment, and feed a growing world, and to educate and empower people to do those jobs including maintaining and improving the Affordable Care Act, which will give 30 million people, many of them with pre-existing conditions insurance for the first time. <laughs> and which, much to the chagrin of its opponents, has just given us two years with health inflation at 4% or less for the first time in 51 years. <laughs> program will allow students for the first time ever to borrow money at low cost from the federal government and pay it back as a low fixed percentage of income for up to 20 years. This means, this means nobody will ever have to drop out of college again because saying this, I never had a nickel before I left the White House. <laughs> Don't forget, in the decade before the crash, 90% of the gains went to the top 10%, 43% to the top 1%, and we also paid, got most of the tax cuts. All we're being asked to do is to kick back in a little money by paying what we paid when I was president, and upper income people did just fine, but it was the only time in the last 30 years that Every quintile, that is the bottom 20%, the 40%, the 60%, the 80%, in percentage terms, your income went up just as much as the top 20%, and we were all growing together. That's what President Obama wants to do. Now, if you look at his opponent, he says, no, 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 we need to do what we did under President Bush. We need to have a big tax cut for high income people, and we need to cut all these investments and cut all this education 
and repeal the student loan law, make college loans more expensive and increase the dropout rate. That's their proposal. And we need to cut the Medicaid program by a third. Just tell four kids, most of them are working families. Oh, and it does help Medicare seniors who are living in nursing homes. And it does help middle class families with children with disabilities, with autistic conditions, and cerebral palsy and developmental disabilities, whose parents could not even work if they were not helped mm -hmm. to meet right. their children's exceptional cost. Right. He wants to get to cut all that to give me another tax cut. And you say, well, we don't think the numbers add up. Because even if you make up for this $5 trillion that you want to cut in taxes, or the $2.5 trillion you want to spend, President Obama doesn't, even if you could do that, you still have to reduce the deficit one red cent. So give us a budget. You know, you're the finance guy. And he said, see me about that after the election. Yeah. <laughs> see me about that. It's always, see me about that after the election. Yeah. When I was a kid growing up in Hot Springs, Arkansas, we had a great guy at a bar. 